Here at WCYE, we live, learn, and love Jesus. building to experience the word. RSK, let it play, boy. WCYE is the place to be. Here's where we love God, we have fun, and we're just free. RSK, let it play, boy. You better come to church this Sunday. WCYE Junior High Studios, if you're in the building, 10 o'clock, it's gonna rock. Listen, ask your mother, father, sister, uncle, brother, or friend, you can even what? Bring the dog, I don't care as long as you are there in the building, let's go. questions about sports that's okay but I'm going to be asking him questions about football yeah that's cute like butterflies the first question is how much do you know about football what's up y'all what I know about football is that it was founded in 1892 and it was a collision between soccer and rugby um and, and it's also like who doesn't like football that's, That's nice. Yeah. Well, the second question is, what position do you play? Well, I used to play quarterback and receiver. Quarterback is where, you know, obviously, you throw the ball, and running back is where you run and basically just catch the ball. That's, That's interesting. Nice. Okay. All right, well, question three is, what's your favorite football team? The best football team? The Ravens. The Baltimore Ravens! Ah! Oh. Well, why don't they have a team, Butterflies? Why don't they use glitter? Yeah. Mm. Well, that, that was Ask Elena. Ah, 
you're back. We're so grateful that you decided to come on back this week. My name is Pastor Alyssa, the pastor with the blue hair because I really do care. And listen, on behalf of our senior pastors, Pastor Creflo and Taffy Dollar, our senior youth pastors, Constance and Anthea Adams, and of course myself, I would love to say welcome. Listen, we're so grateful that you decided to join us. And if this is your first time here at WCYE, make sure that you like and you subscribe right down at the bottom because we want to make sure we connect with you every single time. Listen, each week we've been rocking through and we said this year we're going to go a little deeper, a little different. Last week we started this new series of Surviving Middle School. Help from hallway, from home to hallway. Yes, I need some help in saying all those words together. But we looked at it this way. It's a new year. Um, you got a lot of new things that are coming up, preparing for tests, right? Preparing for Georgia milestones, depending on where you live. But we also wanted to make sure that you came out of sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade successfully. So listen, we're going to rock through this surviving middle school guide. We want to make sure that you jump into it. Last week, we talked about what, how not to get grounded or get a whooping ever, ever, right? And we believe that it can happen. If you believe, we believe. If you follow these steps, it can happen for you. So this week, we're going to jump in with part two, and we want to take you along with us. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you so much for this moment in time to be able to share some practical information, Lord God, so that we can get through middle school on top. That, Father, you would give us this basic instruction. So as your middle schoolers apply it, Lord, that all will be well, that they will enjoy themselves because they're freed up from having to worry about any challenges at all. We ask that your Holy Spirit lead, guide, direct, be a part of this conversation, be a part of this confirmation of things maybe in their lives that, Lord, yep, <laughs> they may need to change. We ask, Lord, that you prepare the hearts of your parents, even as your young people are changing, that their parents receive the new them, that they are changing and that all is well. In advance, we declare grace, grace. In advance, we say thank you, Father, for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's get right into it right now. We're talking about a guide to surviving middle school from home to hallway help. And we're doing part two. I want you to take a look at this. I want you to take a look at this video. My tongue is already tied. Listen, I want you to take a look at this video and tell me again if you see you. Why can't I sleep in? Why have to get up so early on Christmas? Who's this, toilet paper? Yo, man, quit that. Oh, quit. Sorry, sorry. No! This is 2K19! I want a 2K20! Don't just throw it all around. Pick it up. I'm not... Why not pick it up? We wrapped that for you. you. I didn't ask you to wrap it! Young man, pick up the trash. Oh my gosh! Hey, hang out with your family. We are hanging out. Don't you want to put your phone up and talk to us? Not really. Put your phone up. Yeah! <laughs> Go read your cookbook or something. You better apply What? Sorry, sorry. Look who's under the mistletoe. What? Do you wish Emily was here? Stop! Oh, no! On. Gross! Stop! I know you like her. Stop! You think you'll get what you asked for for Christmas? I don't know, will I? Watch it. What I want is my braces off my teeth and you off my back. Are you kidding me? Alright, I'm getting my belt. Uh, what? If God wanted you to have tattoos, he'd put them on your body. Yep, Robinson's read the Christmas Eve service. First time they've been there since Easter. Young man, you know if there's anything you need, your parents won't get you. You can just come ask Grammy, okay? Love you. I'm not gonna value family time until my parents value my art. I've caught like eight rats in my parents' basement. I don't get why everyone's so bummed about getting a lump of coal. It's basically what my soul is. Hey, we hang up our coats. Who says this? Three, two, one. Who has trash? Hey, in the bag. Who has two? What'd you maybe do? Open one, it's your turn. Well, no, not that one. You need if you're gonna open the green one, then you need to open the red one at the same time. How about okay, you guys but you guys, this is Ax Axel! Axel, sit down. Listen, Axel. I don't care that you haven't opened it yet. It's trash. I'm just gonna I'm gonna open it for you and throw it away. You guys come in. No, you guys sit around. You guys sit. I'm fine. No, I am perfectly fine. I'm fine. You guys sit around. Okay, I wonder what this is. This is from the kids. 
even though I bought it and wrapped it and the kids don't even know what it is, but go ahead and open it. Now, if you don't like it, be honest, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. How do I work this? You have any more candles? This is the reason for the season. Oh, Ax Axel! Lucky for you, you kids get more uh, money in your stockings this year. The way Trump's got the economy booming. Kiddos, come here. Let me see, I brought some of my coin collection. Come here, young man, let me look at you. Are you growing? You're getting taller, aren't you? Grandpa, I'm 28. I think you're growing a little bit. Yoo! Who's got the Chardonnay? Your aunt just got her fourth divorce final act. Here you go, woo! What do you kids think of this? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Kanye West really turned it around, huh? <laughs> Glad to know he's celebrating Christmas this year. That's pretty cool. All right, this one's from Mom and the Kid. How did you guys know this is what I want? Oh! <laughs> but really, uh, thank you, I need to do golf balls. Son, give me the remote back. Give me, hey, I changed your diaper, I get to change the channels. <laughs> your mother got me this, so uh, whenever I need her, I can just, another brownie, honey. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> So My girlfriend's 300 pounds. <laughs> uh-huh, that was a lot going on, but that's a lot of y'all out there going ham with your parents, having an attitude, throwing yourself down on the floor, throwing yourself down on the bed, on your butt. Listen, we got to do better. But these are the reasons why you're getting on punishment. These are the reasons why you're getting grounded. These are the reasons why you're still getting whooping in the eighth grade. We're going to help you out, though. Listen, let's go ahead and jump in. The first one is, and we went through a few, we went through a few of them last week. My time is so tired. But we want to start here this week. The first thing, or one of the first things, that will help you not to get grounded ever, not to get a whooping ever, is this. You'll see it on the screen. Believe that God loves you and does not want you to get grounded or get in trouble. Believe that God loves you and he doesn't want you to get on punishment. He doesn't want you in trouble. He doesn't want you grounded. He doesn't want your phone taken. He doesn't want you in the house all day looking at your parents. They don't even want you in the house all day looking at them. One thing I want you to remember too, or another thing I want you to remember, is that God is rooting for you. If anybody's your cheerleader, he is. That's why he wants that relationship with you so that he can continue to guide you, direct you, lead you when you're going the wrong way, talking crazy. <laughs> crazy tone coming out, questioning things that shouldn't be questioned, or knowing that you should do things right away so that you don't get on punishment or get grounded. That's the kind of relationship he wants with you so that you'll be successful. Let's look at this one right here. On the screen it says, you have to renew your mind to think like God thinks. That's the one primary thing that's going to help you when you start changing your mind about how you think. And I don't want you to change your mind about, you know, as it relates to how your friends think about things. That's not going to help you. If anything, that'll get you in more trouble than you were before. But I want you thinking about how does God think? What does God think about this, right? What would please him? You're saying, Miss Alyssa, I'm in the sixth grade. How can I think like God? Well, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you asked that. Look there, I said, just because you're in middle school does not mean you can't think like God does. Because you are made in his image, you are just like God. Oh my God, I've heard my mom say that before. Because it's true. But when you do this, it begins to put you in a position to renew your mind. You have God's word before you. And when you read it, you meditate on it, you're thinking it through, you're saying it over and over again, you start to think like God thinks. And it becomes easier as you practice because you're just like him. And so when you start doing that, you start thinking like him and you also start responding like him. So then you won't miss. Here's a scripture in Isaiah 55 verse 8. Take a moment, turn there. Take a moment and turn there. Isaiah 55 verse 8. We're talking about renewing your mind to think like God thinks. 
when you start thinking like he thinks, you'll start responding like he responds. Isaiah 55 and 8 says this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. I'm going to read it one more time. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. And what he's saying is, it's kind of simple. Hey, listen, I don't necessarily think like you. I think a little bit higher than you because I'm thinking, I'm looking at things from a different view. And he said, the way I do things may not necessarily be the way you do things, but I'm looking at it from a different view because I know where you're going. I know the destiny that I have for you. I know how you're going to get there. And so he tells us, listen, my ways are not like your ways. He wants them to be, though. My thoughts are not like your thoughts. He wants them to be, though. And the best way that you can do it is as you get into God's word, as you build a relationship with him. Listen, it's on and popping then. Here's the thing. Ask God to help you with how you think about your response to things. What? Ask him to help you on how you respond to things. And see, that's the way you think. If you think it's okay to suck your cheek, what, I said I was coming? And do your face all like that? That's the way of thinking. If you think that's okay, that's what you'll do. If you think in your mind, your response should be, yes, ma'am. Or even if you, you mess up, if you switch up and you start, oh, and quickly, quickly, you turn it around, I apologize, I shouldn't have did that. Because you're practicing thinking like God, I know that wouldn't be right, right? You're practicing responding like God, and you turn from that way and you apologize. And I said, listen, this is so hard. No, it's not. It's just a little, as Pastor Anthony says, it's not hard, it's unfamiliar. To in that moment, think about what you're thinking about. In that moment, ask God to help you with how you think about the way you respond. Literally, okay, Lord, <sighs> My tone is off. Help me, God. Why am I doing that? Okay, I'm agitated because I want to go back upstairs and want to finish my game. Okay, Lord, help me to be patient. Help me right now, God, to just do what she's asking me because I know I should have did it earlier. Help me to do it with the right attitude and get back to what I'd like to do. And then you turn it around. You'll find that you start bringing that stress level down for you and your parents. Right? Turn in your Bible to Genesis 1 and 27. Genesis 1 and 27. Because I hear some of you saying, Miss Alyssa, I don't know how I can do that. I don't know how I can think like God. Well, I share it with you. You're just like him. You're made in the image of God. And that's where Genesis 1, 27 comes in. It says, God spoke, let us make human beings in our image. Make them reflecting our nature. And when it says, make them reflecting our nature, it means make them so that they respond and do what we do. So that they respond and do what we do. So it's not just Miss Alyssa sitting here going, hey, you need to act differently. You need to respond differently. No, it's God saying, listen, I made you just like me in the same image as me. And I made you so that you can respond in the same nature. You ever hear people say, hey, that's my second nature? Meaning it's the first thing I do after I would normally, what I would normally do. Same thing. God wants your response to be second nature to respond just like him. Second nature to respond just like him. I want you to think about that as you continue to practice these steps. This is part two of how not to get grounded. How not to get a weapon ever again. Here's the last thing that I want to share with you before we close. Number five. When you decide to question what is asked of you, it comes across as rebellion to your parents. Even if that's not what you intended to your parents, it's disobedience. I'm going to read it again. When you question, meaning like they'll ask you, ask you to come downstairs and you say, why I got to, they didn't do, that's not what you said. I got to do it right now. All of those responses come across as rebellion, even though that's not what you're meaning, even though that's not your heart, 
That's how it comes across. I want you to hear this being said so you're aware now when your parents come back like, what? I don't. You'll understand now. Okay, let me, you know what? My response should be, yes, ma'am. My response should be, yes, sir. It won't come across as rebellion. It won't come across as disobedience. Look what I have there on the screen. It says, your parents are giving you instructions and training based on where you are going in life, not based on how you feel at this moment. They're giving you instruction based on where you're going, based on where you're going, based on the destiny that God has for you. You know, I read a story on last week and I love reading the the Bible stories. A lot of times you don't, you don't get to hear where do you know, where did he, where do we get these things from Lord? I love reading the Bible, especially the Bible stories because it lets you have a model, something to follow, something to connect to. And you know, who doesn't like a good story, but I want to read this, the parable of the lost son. And I like this scripture because it talks about how when he made up his mind to do what he wanted to do and go the way he wanted to go, didn't turn out so well, but it did turn around. So I'm just going to read through. I want you to sit back, relax, and listen to it. I'm reading in the NIV and it's Luke 15, 11 to 32. Just listen up. It says, Jesus continued. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, father, give me my share of the estate, meaning give me my money. I'm ready to go. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living, meaning that he spent everything that his dad gave him. After he spent everything, there was a severe famine in that entire country, and he began to be in need. So he went, hired himself out to a citizen of that country. Now that means he went and got him a job, who sent him to the fields to feed the pigs. He got a job, but it wasn't the best job. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. So that means he was so hungry that he would have even eaten what the pigs were eating, but they didn't want to even give him that. When he came to his senses, he said, wait a minute, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And I'm here starving. That means he began to look at himself like, wait a minute, my dad got plenty going on. What am I doing? I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son and make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. So he had in his mind, you know what? I'm going to go apologize. I'm going to turn this thing around. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw me. He was coming down the road. He was coming down Godby Road. His father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. So much so that he ran up to him. He hugged him, kissed him, and was like, oh, my God. But the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against you. I've sinned against heaven. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. His dad was like, you tripping. His servant, he told, he told the servants, he said, look, quick, bring the best robe, put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. But this son of mine was dead and is alive, is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Listen to me. Even in his decision to do what he wanted to do, that was rebellion. In his decision to be disobedient, he left his father's house, took everything that his father provided for him, decided to go in his own way, got out there and realized, oh, this ain't what I thought it was. Oh, this ain't what it's supposed to be. Let me get back to my father's house where there's safety, where there's food, where there's shelter. Same thing with you. God is saying, listen, Don't get out from my covering. It may not be easy in the beginning, but if you practice listening, if you practice obeying the first time, if you practice the fact that, you know what? I'm going to remind myself, God loves me. It'll start turning you, turning your heart to to a place where, you know what? It's just automatic. I'm just a person of obedience. That's what I do. I'm just a person of obedience. I don't make excuses like we talked about last week. When you do these things, it sets you up to succeed. Put that in the chat. I'm set up to succeed. I'm set up to succeed. I'm set up to succeed. 
We don't want you to be in a position where you're like, oh, God, I hate middle school. Like, you hate all of middle school. And it's really not that. You just have to practice one thing at a time. One, believe that God loves you and that he himself does not want you to be grounded or to fail or to be on punishment. Renew your mind so that you think like God thinks and then you'll respond like God. And remember what I said? Just because you're in middle school doesn't mean you can't think like him because you're made in the same image. The scripture Isaiah 55 and 8, it said, listen, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. So get to know his thoughts and his ways. Ask God to help you about how you think about the way you respond. And remember, too, when your parents are instructing you or giving you things to do or asking you to do the same thing over and over again, it's because they're giving you instructions based on or they're giving you training based on where you're going and not how you feeling right in that moment. Listen, that's all I have for today. And I want to again let you know we're taking it little by little, piece by piece, so that you really get a handle on not having some of the drama and trauma that you have in middle school. You can be a young person who gets through middle school any grade without getting on punishment, getting your phone taken, having your whole schedule just in the house. And so we want to make sure that you know how to do it. Not just because I'm saying it, but based on God's word. Now listen, you may have heard some of the scriptures that I shared along with some of the basic information. And you may have said, Miss Alyssa, I really, I don't know how to connect like that. And it may be because you've never connected with Jesus himself. You've never said, Lord, come into my heart because you made me just like you. I want to connect with you. And so if you've never said, Jesus, come into my heart, if you've never accepted him as your Lord and Savior so that you can have this type of relationship, I want to invite you to say this prayer right now. And it's a short one. Repeat after me. Father, thank you for saving me. Come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe that when your blood was shed, it was so that I could be forgiven of my sins, past, present, and future. Thank you, Lord. I accept you and receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Listen, if that was the first time you ever said that, then I want to say, Welcome to the family. Listen, I want you to do me a favor. If that was the first time that you said that, you're part of the family now. And I want you to see these words right here. I want you to text I am S A V E D to 51555 right there on the screen. Because, yeah, you made a powerful decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you're going to need some help to keep it moving. And I want to send you a special gift so that you can do that. I want to send you a special gift to give you some ideas and some encouragement along the way to keep you staying in point or staying on point. That'll help. Either way, we love you so much, and we really believe that God is going to do some great things in your life because we're going real practical and real basic. Oh, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? We love you so much, and we'll see you next time. Part of our worship experience here is communion. Communion is where we show appreciation for God being whipped and bruising all for our sins and our sins being forgiven in the past, present, and the future. So what we're going to do now is take our bread and our juice. You can, it can be anything at home. It's about what it means to you. So we're going to take our bread. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving all our sins. Take your juice. Lord, we thank you us in Jesus name. Amen. Hi WCYE, it's Glory and today I'm going to talk to you about offering because it's now offering time. Now I want you to understand what offering is before we get into it because your money is important. I don't want you just going and doing whatever. So offering is basically how we tell God that we love him and that we trust him. It's one of the many ways to tell him that. So we don't necessarily give because oh if I give, I get blessed. We're already blessed. So we can give just to say thank you for the blessings that we get. Now we give out of a cheerful heart. Don't be giving you like, here, I don't want it, but here. Like, give with a cheerful heart. So 
because if you give it shall be given unto you luke 6 38 so now the late the ways that you can give will be listed on the screen so pay attention to that so you can give and now we're gonna pray over the Lord God, we come to you in Jesus' name, thanking you, Lord Jesus, for all the seeds that have sown. Thank you, Lord God, that these gifts will come back to them tenfold. And thank you, Lord Jesus, that they will learn to give for the right reasons and that they continue to do so. In Jesus' name, amen. Now that's it. I'm going to see y'all later. Bye.